Hello, I'm Steve and I am going to talk to you about uh, how I deal with my hypermania. These are my tips and I've got some cue cards to help me remember what I'm going to say to you. The first thing is to know thyself, um, which means try and develop a sort of an insight into your own mind um, to uh, really sort of keep an eye on when you are going to when you feel you're tipping over into mania, uh, maybe make a list of uh, the, those occasions where you've been manic in the past and try and identify when um, when you've uh, felt, when you've known that that was sort of, uh, sort of re resulted in a, a manic episode. Um, I find that uh, that's really useful. But also, um, be honest with yourself as well, because I think what I've tended to do in the past is to not be honest with my own about my own manic um, uh, episodes. And uh, I know this sounds a bit cute, but you know you are what you are, and you know sort of um, embrace your you know your special unique qualities. Okay, next thing is triggers. Recognise the things that are going to trigger you off. Uh, for me. Um, I'm quite a passionate person. I get really um, sort of, uh, really sort of um, angry about certain things. Uh, not, you know, not on a personal day to day, day, -to -day basis with people, um, but very much about social injustice and stuff like that. And um, because I work in within, within a campaigning environment, um, I am very passionate about the work I do. Uh, but sometimes I have to make sure that I switch off and not get too overwhelmed by it because what will happen is if I'm working on a particular campaign and I start, I, I, my first ideas are very creative um, and you know I, I, and I feel very energetic about, energe energized about something. Uh, but sometimes that energy will just not go away. And sometimes it's unavoidable if you work in a, it's particularly in a work environment like I am that 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 you you do get that normal rush of energy. So at your weekends or that kind of thing, if you're that in the same kind of environment I that I am, is to try and cancel some of those sort of um, kind of appointments you've got with friends and you know that just just give yourself a weekend to yourself so you can rest. Okay. Next one is oh not that one. It's uh, <laughs> don't panic, don't panic. When you're um, in a manic attack, or when I'm in a manic attack, um, my tendency has been in the past to, although I might be aware that I'm actually in a manic, in a manic phase, um, that I can't get out of it, and that I'm locked into it, and then the anxiety will start coming up and I'll start thinking, oh my God, you know, I'm going to be ill and I'm going to be depressed and I'm going to be off sick from work and all these things will start sort of piling into my mind and, you know, it just becomes this whole sort of real sort of hot pot of nastiness. So what I've tried to do, and this is a technique which I'd recommend anybody to try and learn about, is mindfulness. Now, um, you know, I'm only starting to learn more about this particular process, but it's that the, the way it's basically stepping outside of where you are within your manic cycle and just sort of viewing the things which are actually sort of running through your head. And I said it's not an easy process to always adopt, um, but. And as I said, it takes a while to actually get used to it. But um, I find it useful because what it, what happens is if I do step back and try and step out of myself, um, I will... Um, things don't look so bad. Next thing is friends. Don't forget, you know, um, if you've got... If you're very lucky to have people in your life, um, like I am, and people who care about you, then don't forget that you know they make all they can make all the difference and don't be afraid to open up if you know we're not you know some of us aren't you know some of us might not have as many people as close to them as they can but if you can find one or two people that you can feel that you can trust um to talk things through with then i recommend you do that 
And quite frankly, if people get pissed off at you because of your bipolar condition and they call themselves a friend, well, I don't think they really are. And finally, um, you're not a failure. Um, learning how to deal or manage hypermanic uh, episodes can be a real pain. Um, and, uh, you know, I've fallen off that galloping horse many a time in trying to manage my hypermania. The thing to do is to always just take away a lesson learned from, from those occasions when you have sort of not been able to um, deal with it and say, right, okay, this time it didn't work and I didn't quite manage my hypermania because of this or that. Um, and just sort of, sort of build up a sort of a, a list of the things that have actually worked for you. Um, and be kind to yourself. Be kind to yourself because the point is you're not a failure if you find it difficult to sometimes manage your hypermania. You know, it, it's just a learning, it's always learning and being prepared to learn about it all the time. Um, and, you know, I think eventually you'll get to a place well, that, that it, you know, where you feel that you can manage things. But I hope you found this useful and take care of yourselves.